Hi guys, welcome back to Red Dog Gaming, where today we are starting a brand new video. And as you can see, we are starting on the Parthia campaign map, because today we are taking a look at the humble pajama boy, the humble horse archer. And I'm going to try and argue to you guys why this unit is by far the most overpowered campaign unit in the whole of the game. Now, will these guys beat a armored war, le a war elephant one-on-one? -on -one? Of course not. Will they beat an urban cohort one-on-one? -on -one? Probably not. But they are the best, the most red readily available, the most powerful campaign unit you can have that is so overpowered, it's ridiculous. Now, if you are experienced in this game, you probably think that, you know, this is completely true. You probably know this already. You probably have experienced fighting with these guys and known how ridiculously OP they can be. But if you aren't that experienced, don't really like playing Eastern Factions or you're brand new to the game, you're probably thinking, looking at these stats, that I'm a fucking lunatic. But I'm going to explain to you why I'm not. So we're going to go through three sections today, guys. First of all, the military strength of the Horse Archer. Second of all, the cost. And third of all, the availability. And those three pillars are really why this unit stands far and above as the best unit in the campaign. Full stop, full stop. There's no better unit in the campaign as an all-round unit. Um, but first of all, let's look at the military strength. So when you first look at it, four morale, three melee attack, total defense of two with no armor, and two charge. You think to yourself, am I stupid? Because those are terrible stats. Trust me, really, really bad. Absolutely terrible, terrible stats. I believe the city and horse archers have exactly the same stats. And all your horse archers between factions are pretty much the same, the base game horse archers. So we are just looking at Parthias, but there are other factions that have them. Namely, Scythia, um, I believe Armenia, Pontus... Um, and that's about it, I think, guys. Uh, I could be wrong about Pontus, but I don't know. But the big draw of these guys is their huge missile attack of seven, which is really good, guys. Really good early game. And with 40, 40 arrows uh, and a missile range of 120, which isn't great, but it's fine. It doesn't mean they have long range missiles. Um, so let's run a few stats for you guys if we claim that they have 50 percent accuracy i've tried to look for the accuracy of these guys i can't find it anywhere really um i don't know whether it's hard coded or whether it's in the file somewhere but i have not delved through every single file have a look for it however and i couldn't quite find it but let's say they have a 50 percent accuracy which is probably about right against a thick formation of infantry one of these guys with 40 arrows can do 140 total damage. Just one, not whole 54. But times 54, one unit of these guys at 50% accuracy can do 7,560 damage. Think about that. 7,560 damage. That is crazy. Like, that is genuinely crazy. That is per one unit. So instantly, if you have five of these guys, you're talking 35,000 damage in a single battle if they get all their arrows off. Which, if you are playing as these guys, you can see their melee stats are absolute dog shit. So please do use these guys properly. Like, please do use these guys in the background, firing away. Do not charge them in unless you absolutely have to. Unless you absolutely have to, promise you. So, one other thing to note with these guys on their military strength is that they are fast moving as well. So, unless they are very tired or tired and the other cavalry is fresh, their cavalry won't catch you. And by the time they do, you will have whittled them down so well that they will probably break. So, the fast moving element incredibly adds... To that great, great unit stats that they have as a missile attack. They are very, very susceptible 
to archers, however, with zero armor and no shield. So please keep them out of fire from archers. Um, buy a gold three experience, guys, as well. These guys have 16 missile attack. That is equivalent to an urban cohort's starting attack with Peeler. Without experience, of course. So obviously the, the uh, urban cohorts can get a lot stronger with their Peeler. But 16 missile attack, guys. That is ridiculously OP. With 40, 40 arrows to fire at the enemy. That is incredible. So if you agree with my military strength, please do comment down below because these guys are very strong. And we're going to show you at the end with a little rundown battle. Now, let's move on to the second facet as to why they are so OP. Their cost. They are cheap, 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 guys. Very, very cheap. They have a 110 upkeep. A peasant, if you don't know, has a 100 upkeep. 100 upkeep and 120 to recruit. The thing with the horse archers, however, is they do have a 440 gold requirement to recruit. So they are reasonably expensive to recruit. But if you compare that to a Hestati, for example, a Hestati have about a 440 recruitment. But their upkeep in, is instead 170. So they are a lot more expensive, 50% more expensive to run uh, in your armies than these guys. I know they have more troops. They'll probably have 80 on this. This We are on large unit scale, by the way. Um, but yeah, they will probably have... They will have 80 troops in that unit rather than 54. But 440 is a very cheap for a starting early game unit. Well, when I say very cheap, it's reasonably cheap. It's not, you know, Eastern Infantry or Peasant Standard. But these guys are incredibly strong. So if we compare that to some other sort of overpowered units or equivalent units, another equivalent unit would be the Equites with a recruitment cost of 420, so slightly cheaper, and they do have an upkeep of 110. But one of these guys could take down Equites very easily, guys, and do more damage to others. So they are stronger than Equites, definitely. Um, if we look at some OP units, so Cataphracts have a recruitment cost in Remastered of 940 and an upkeep cost of 190. So that upkeep cost is nearly double and the recruitment cost is double, is more than double. So Cataphracts, again, very overpowered unit, but these guys, you can get two of them per one Cataphract and genuinely, I would say two of these guys can probably do more damage than one unit of Cataphracts, especially after they've got a bit of upgraded in the experience. Now, War Elephants, of course, are hugely expensive, 2,520, and they have an upkeep cost of 490. Um, and Urban Cohorts in the original had an upkeep cost of 8, uh, sorry, a recruitment cost of 860 and a upkeep cost of 320. So you can practically run three Horse Archers per one Urban Cohort, um, and they have about double the recruitment cost. But of course, we know money doesn't really matter too late into this game. But early game, these guys are so strong to recruit. If you are recruiting anything other than these guys as Parthia or Scythia early game, then you need to go see a doctor. Because these are the cheapest, most overpowered units in the game, as I'm arguing here, guys. Um, so, we want to move on to number three. Why are they this smart, strong? Why am I going on about them so much? When you compare them to the Cataphracts, you could think, oh, the Cataphracts, one of ca one Cataphract could take these guys down. It'd be close. It definitely would be close, guys. But yes, Cataphracts are very strong. So are Legion, Legionary Cavalry. So are War Elephants. So are Urban Cohorts. So are Praetorian Cohorts. But the big thing that sets these guys apart, that really, really puts them above and beyond every single other overpowered unit in this game is the fact that they are available in any large town that has a stables. Any large town that has a stables, guys. Look at the building roster here. You can get your first stables with a large town and, of course, your first stables enables requirement, enables uh, training of horse archers. 
Now, look at the urban cohorts. You need a huge city. Look at the war elephants. You need a huge city. As in armoured war elephants. War elephants, you need a large city, I believe. Let us just check that. Yes, large city for, for war elephants. Um, cataphracts. They require a minor, a large city as well, actually. So, you can recruit these guys in large towns, which pretty much means you can retrain them nearly everywhere on the map. Especially when you are fighting as Parthia, you're coming into Armenia, Egypt. There's not many places that remain as just towns. Scythia is slightly different. If you're fighting barbarians, there are a few towns out here. So, you're not going to be able to retrain them everywhere. But you can train and retrain these guys nearly everywhere on the map. It is crazy. So even if you lose a few in a battle, it's very likely you'll be able to retrain them very close by. And I believe that that really sets them apart as being the most overpowered campaign unit, most definitely. Because you don't need to wait for a large or a huge city to recruit this overpowered unit. You can just have a large town, one large town, and you could just create an army that would destroy nearly everyone in this game like it's crazy couple that with getting experience on these guys when they uh, fight battles and your missile attack will be pumping high and these guys will be able to take down you know a full stack of these guys that are experienced will be able to take down you know full stack post marion roman army roman armies that have good armor like it is ridiculous and by the time you've got to Rome as Parthia, depending on how aggressively you play, I played it aggressively enough to get there before the Marian reforms, which was actually quite a bit of a shame. Um, and you can check that Parthia campaign down in the description below and my Scipii campaign. Um, but yeah, if you get there post Marian, they won't even recruit that many urban and Praetorian cohorts anyway. So you're going to destroy these guys. And by the time you've got here, you should have a couple of stacks with very good experience because they've been fighting Egypt, they've been fighting through Anatolia and Greece. So they should have a decent amount of experience. So, guys, do you agree with me? I don't know. You might not. You might think I'm a lunatic. You might think I'm crazy. But yes, I believe that these guys are most very, very likely the strongest campaign unit in the game because of their military strength in terms of their arrows, in terms of the 40... Um, arrows that they get so you might be thinking why not the Persian cavalry because they are actually very much stronger in nearly every facet of the game but they have the same missile attack and they only have 30 ammo but then again their morale and melee attack is really good but the problem is they can only be recruited in minor cities and I can't tell you enough how much a benefit it is to being able to re uh, for the horse archers to be able to recruit it in every large town if you take them um, a large town and exterminate it you can still recruit these guys with the with the stables if you take a minor city and they don't have the cavalry stables built you've got to build it it's just so much more likely to find a large town with the stables uh, than it is to you know be taking minor cities especially early game that have the cavalry stables already up and running so yes i believe these humble pajama boys are the strongest unit in the game in the campaign game and we're going to go to a battle. We're going to go to a small battle. I'm going to pit two of these guys against one urban cohort. Because they're about a, a double the cost to recruit two of these guys. Uh, than one urban cohort. And we're going to see who wins. So guys, I think we're going to do three of these guys against one urban cohort. Just because they're about the same upkeep for three of them. And here we are. We're going to see whether they can beat them. Obviously, the urban cohort is notoriously OP. Like, we're notoriously OP. So, we will try to beat these guys. But it may not work. It may, we, we might not beat them, but I don't know. I hope we do. But even if we don't, we'll be able to see the destructive power of these guys. Without any experience and without anything. First things first, let's turn you off fire at will. We're going to properly micro this. Uh, we're not. We're just going to fire it as much as we can. Yes. Taking a few down. 
When they turn around, that's excellent for us. So we're firing in the back of them. Look at them go. Look at them go. Look at them whittle down. See, three units. Very strong. So, three units wouldn't be able to be recruited for the same cost as an urban cohort. But, again, three units could be recruited in three turns. An urban cohort in two. So, it's not too bad. On top of that... Oh, God, they're getting a bit worried now, I believe. On top of that, these guys are... Oh, they're going to Studo. Let's not... I don't want that to happen. <laughs> Stop firing. Stop firing. They might rout if we come close to them. This is the general's unit, though. Interesting they've got it into test judo. Right, get out, get out, get out. Fire at will. Now they've got out of test judo. Nice one. Excellent for us. Yeah, nice. Fire at them, guys. They might go into test judo again. That would be quite annoying. You can see the destructive impact of these guys. Like, they're so strong. Um, two of them might not be able to take this guy down. That is the one thing. Now they're just standing there. That's not Test Judo. Nope, they're going Test Judo again. Oh, no, nope, they've uh, stopped Test Judo. Probably got two little units in the... Uh, in the... The old thing. The old unit. To do an effective test judo. You can see, we've not even used half the ammo yet, guys. So, And we are on very hard, by the way. Just so you know. Um, if I was in a real battle, I would recommend turning your skirmish mode off. But yeah, as I say, we'll go through some tips and tricks for these guys as well. Uh, while we finish this battle off. Because obviously I don't want to bore you guys to death. Uh, but yeah, tips and tricks... Turn skirmish mode off, otherwise they do crazy shit like that. Um, always keep them away from the enemy. Do not get them in melee. What I'm going to do now... They've got 13 left. We will win this battle. What I'm going to do... You're the general. We're going to charge these guys in, and I'm going to show you how bad they are in melee. Even though I'm trying to show you how OP they are. Oh, we broke them. But I guess... Did you see how many died in that charge? And I'm surprised they didn't rout. A lot of the time they will just rout being near the enemy. But yes. And on top of that, them being fast moving means they are perfect for charging down routing enemies. Turn you all off fire at will. But yeah, tips and tricks, guys. Keep them like that. If you have a full stack, what I would do, what I generally would do, is... So if you have a full stack, guys, what I would generally do is split your army in two, your horse archers in two, with one on one side, one on the other, and split the enemy up. And then it gives you time to focus on certain units and rattle them down. But yes, as you can see, three horse archer units can take down one urban cohort. They only have 50% more soldiers in their battalion, and they have trash melee stats. And urban cohorts are notoriously, notoriously, ridiculously OP in this game. So guys, what do you think of my conclusion then? That the horse archer, the humble pyjama boy, is the most overpowered campaign-based unit in the game. Now, one-on-one, -on -one, it's not going to beat those other, those other OP units. It's not going to beat them one-on-one. -on -one. But its strength comes in numbers and its strength comes in distance. And on top of that, its campaign strength comes in its availability and cheapness. And I think that combination all together means that it is the most overpowered campaign unit in the game. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Please comment down below what you think. Please let me know what you think. Please do like this video. If we could get up to 20 likes on this video, that would be amazing. And do subscribe. Thank you very much for, uh, for watching, guys, and I'll see you again on the next video.